Acute low back pain, lumbar disc herniation. Low back pain is a common condition and this video will try to shed some light on this topic. We start with the natural history of acute low back pain. 90% of the patient will improve without surgery. Usually they get better with a spontaneous resolution of the symptoms within 12 weeks. We usually advise the patient for early return to activity and function as the symptoms and the pain permits. Another area is the risk factors. The risk factors for development of low back pain are numerous and here are some of them. Vibration exposure, poor physical fitness, smoking and obesity, and anxiety and depression, job dissatisfaction, repetitive bending or stooping on the job. The worst pressure on the desk is with prolonged sitting and bending over. And here is a diagram that shows which position of the spine produces the highest pressure on the desk. Another point is the radiological studies. Do I need to dig deeper early in the treatment of the patient? If the patient has back pain, no radiation, by the patient history or physical exam, and there's no red flags, there's no reason to get x-rays or MRI early in the treatment of the patient. So what are these red flags? Well, if the patient have a history of trauma, then he may have a fracture. You may need to get x-rays or MRI or CT scan to see that. Or the patient may have history of a tumor. The patient is older than 50 years old and the patient had weight loss, pain at rest and at night. Or you may suspect infection. The patient have fever, chills. Patient have a history of diabetes. Patient have a history of IV drug abuse. The patient has coda equina syndrome symptoms. Means the patient has back pain more than the leg pain. The patient will also have bladder and bowel symptoms. You need to diagnose it early and you need to surgically treat it early. You need to get the MRI early in the course of the treatment. You need to get the MRI urgently. So you need to get a STAT MRI. Order the MRI STAT. You may need to pick up the phone and make sure people understand that there might be an emergency or might be a bad problem that the patient has. And you may need to ask for a wet read. A wet read means the early preliminary read got to be communicated with you, the physician, and that can be done while the patient is still on the table of the MRI. So in summary, if the patient has no red flags and has normal neurological exam, there is no reason to get early radiological studies. I think getting early x-rays and early MRIs only leads to better patient satisfaction, but does not give a better patient outcome. In reality, if there is no specific pain pattern, there is no need for further workup. There is no reason to get HLA B27 and sedimentation rate and CRP and rheumatoid factors. How about the MRI? Is it a good study? Of course it is a good study. The problem with the MRI, it gives us a lot of false positives. So do you find an abnormal MRI in asymptomatic patients? There is degeneration or a bulge of a disc in 35% of all the asymptomatic subjects between the age of 25 to 39 years. In patients 60 years or older, the majority of the patients will have changes in the MRI. So the MRI abnormalities are common and must be correlated with the age and the clinical signs and symptoms of the patient. 
But the MRI is good. It's good in diagnosing the lumbar disc herniation, which sometimes is called ruptured disc or a slipped disc or a herniated disc. Location and types of disc herniation. Posterolateral disc herniation is the usual location for a herniated disc. Most commonly, it involves one nerve root, the lower one at that level. For example, L4, L5 posterolateral disc herniation will involve the L5 nerve root. Foraminal disc herniation occurs in about 8 to 10 percent of the cases. It involves the exiting nerve root. The exiting nerve root means the upper nerve root. For example, L4, L5 foraminal disc herniation will involve the L4 nerve root. Foraminal disc herniation occurs in about 8 to 10 percent of the cases. It involves the exiting nerve root. The exiting nerve root means the upper nerve root. For example, L4, L5 foraminal disc herniation will involve the L4 nerve root. And central disc herniation, it involves multiple nerve roots, predominantly causes low back pain more than leg pain. It may cause bladder and bowel symptoms. This is the disc that causes coda equina. You need an urgent diagnosis and an urgent surgical treatment. This is a clinical evaluation for a herniated disc. So here is a posterolateral herniated disc at L4, L5. It will affect the L5 nerve root. Clinical examination of the patient will include examination of the sensory. The L5 supplies the dorsum of the foot and the leg. Motor. The L5 will cause extension of the big toe, extensor hallucis longus. Remember that. It also supplies the abductors of the hip, the gluteus medius and minimus. Reflexes, no reflex for L5. And also evaluation for a straight leg raising sign or the tension sign. The straight leg raising test is the most important finding it can be done sitting and in supine position. The test is positive as indicated by pain in the leg. When the patient leg is raised to flex the hip with the knee extended. A positive straight leg raise means a tension sign. Something putting tension or stress on the sciatic nerve. So when the test is positive, it indicates possible disc herniation. So what is the treatment? The treatment, non-operative treatment, reassure the patient, let the patient take some rest, no more than a few days, give the patient anti-inflammatory medication, and give the patient physiotherapy. So what is the indication for surgery? progressive neurological deficit, or coda equina syndrome, and do urgent decompression here. Or if the patient is not getting better with time and treatment, or if the symptoms of the patient is not getting better with conservative treatment, the patient has a positive tension sign with persistent severe pain. What's the ideal surgical candidate the patient with sciatica and positive tension sign, and the patient that has positive neurological findings on clinical exam with positive MRI findings. So what happens when you do the surgery? There is a relief of leg pain in the majority of patients. Back pain may persist in some patients. The neurological improvement 50% motor and sensory, 25% reflexes. How about the discogenic back pain? This group of patients may need fusion, which is a major procedure. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.